Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of Star Trek Frontiers. Again, thanks so much for all your support. As it seems, I'm still missing to award myself with reputation. I really have to believe you guys now. I'm really bad at this anyway, so I think I should be at plus two. At least this is what I've been told. The good thing about this is right now I'm not getting any benefits out of it. So even if I'm cheating here, it's not that big of a deal. And in the end, I can blame you guys now for cheating. I think that's definitely good. In respect, my hand... I'm really not in a good shape. I started with two damage cards right off the bat, and I believe that's the reason why I really should choose the fortune card right now. I think, yeah, let's let's go for this one. So this allows me to draw two more cards, and we also don't really have a lot of move cards. Okay, that's now much better. So now we do have some actual move, and again, with this skill, I can get rid of this damage card. The AI player, or Lursar and Bitor in this case, will definitely go first, but let's see which tactic. Oh, they go with Ambition. I really do not care about Ambition that much. That's nice. With that being said, they will start. And yes, they have an awful lot of <laughs> yellow data crystals in the inventory. Two and three. Huh, kind of lucky. Only one card because of one data. Nah, this really would have been bad. So they will it's very likely that they will really rush through the deck like crazy this round but yeah let's see so let's try to get rid of one of those damage cards for now i'm allowed to discard that because of our i think resilient skill this allows us to draw another card and that's the honor one hmm interesting so in theory we could inflict nine points worth of damage and yes we do have a die that allows us to use this so wow and with this, we really can do a hell of a lot of damage. So maybe there's a chance we are at least partially taking out this Borg GP. I think I will not be able to do that entirely, but at least to some extent. Yeah, I think we should do that. Yeah. So we will play a move two to move adjacent to that Borg GP. That's pretty much all we can do or we will do for our movement step this turn. First of all, we have to engage the Borg Cube itself, pretty much doing a ranged attack, almost like Star Wars Rebellion, where you have these two theaters and you have to do space battles before you do ground battles, that is. So yeah, um, we have long range attack, but I think I'm not going to. So in this case, we are simply taking six points um, or six hits incoming. Keep in mind, they have now the biogenic weapon. So we will definitely take a hell of a lot of damage. I think I also forgot to flip this over. So in order to not take any damage from the Borg Cube, at least, we will spend Wolf again with our very first action for the shields for here. And we will boost those shields with one and two cards sideways so that's six shields so we are not taking any damage there next we have to come up with 14 damage because they are resistance to literally everything so i think it's now really time to play the honor and we have to power it up as i already mentioned with this white die here so that's now an attack nine so we will take one damage to our hand. This oof, is already pretty bad as it stands. That's a nine. We need um, five more. Apparently we will spend four of those five with those. And then we need one more. And I think we will go hmm, with this card here sideways. So that's five plus nine. That's 14 damage. So this Borg cube has basically been plastered into oblivion but no we will salvage it later apparently we will place one of our faction token on it but again we are playing alone so it doesn't really matter that much we are not have not taken any damage so that's the Borg cube here we are getting eight points at the end of the turn i will place it next to our little experience marker and that was definitely a good start uh problem is now we do have to land on this Ball cube and pretty much have to send an away team. In fact, we could now decide to go with a basic security team because I don't think that we will be able to take out both of those fellas. The thing is, we have Riker and we have the seasoned away team in our hands. That's all good start. Problem is, yeah, both of those have a um 
diplomacy rating of 10. This was really, really strong. If one of those would have shown uh, an 8, I might have been able to take out both of those guys in one go, actually, because we still have a MOBA here with us. So I think I will not be able to come up with enough diplomacy now to take out both. No, I don't think we can. But anyway, um, so we have to send down an away team. Um, thing is, we can basically ignore this because yet again, we will only send a basic security team. But no, I have to send Mova, in fact, in order to use his long range attack. Hmm. So I think he's about to take some damage, but he should be able to survive at least yeah by there the by they will all get hurt so we will beam him down here then yeah we are not going into the diplomacy because again we are really lacking a lot of diplomacy in theory yes i could also send Riker and really try not taking any damage but in this case i think it doesn't matter too much so we are going into the long range attack phase which means we will use him with a long range photon torpedo attack. That's what we are going to do. And in order to do that, we need a red token. So I will play research, which gives us a red token. So we are allowed to fire this guy up worth six points of a long range attack damage, which would then be enough to take out those guys here. So that's another six. Now we go into the assign damage phase. So these guys will assign three points worth of damage. So he's taking a wound now. Um, he can subtract six from the three, so he's fine. So there's nothing else to distribute, so nothing else left over. So the thing is still a success. At least this is how I understand it. Oh, is it? Oh, that's a good point. I think now all of the crew members are wounded at least i could still lose the reputation but again the overall idea was to get rid of one of those um, away team tokens and yes in theory we have no damage that's left so we could come up with more attack in this case seven more we don't have any more attack cards in our hand unfortunately so there's nothing and no no skills we can use so the mission is a fail but the away team at least survived because we were only wounded so we are not losing the reputation that's how i understand it there is still one left over that's a borg defender here but i think that's really something that's beatable hopefully during my next turn or so and that's pretty much the end of the round or the turn i keep doing this in the wrong so we are getting 14 points i mean that's really not too bad so 64 64 awesome so we are allowed to level up once again and that could be really really beneficial now because really i have spent a lot of tokens and and and, and cards in this round but i'm pretty sure this was totally worth it so let's beam everyone back. Ah, uh, one thing I forgot was the biogenic weapon. This means MOBA gets two of those two. So I have to heal him twice in order to get rid of that. So that was definitely a sacrifice, but I still think it might be worth it. Yeah, let's see about that. Um, Yeah, let's reset the board. So discard all the cards. Let's reroll that die. That's a blue one. We take that for sure. And I think then the only thing left to do is to do our level up. Nice. Okay, let's look at our skill tokens. That one is so nice. The tactics one. I really <laughs> I would have done it have this basically in my previous turn um yeah the pork you would have lost three defense because for each resistance as you're losing it's losing one defense down to a minimum of one though and that's pretty similar so if i play a card sideways it still gives me a plus two once per turn and um yeah if it's a basically an advanced card we then get a plus two hmm and then of course we get to choose all the other cards here too um i will not go for the Klingon one even though that is awfully tempting because when i flip it i gain a blue crystal and a black token and black tokens as you know are really crucial when it comes down to those undiscovered cards but i think huh i still think i want uh, do i need, i don't think i need diplomacy that much anymore because the remaining ball cube here is not really about diplomacy <laughs> So this is really a star base. So we really have to have fighting power. So yeah, 
So card-wise, I was really thinking about the tense negotiations here. But again, I don't need that much diplomacy anymore. Um, because yeah, I'm not sure if that's luck or if it's what it is you need defense so in this case the experimental defenses look awfully tempting to move it's also nice but I think I would really go to want to go for this experimental defenses and if I go with a Klingon token I have to go with the bottommost card here and that's really what's driving my decision points here and as there are still an awful lot of resistance out there, I think I will go with the tactics one here because it will reduce the amount of defense for the ball cube. I think that's cool. So let's go for this skill token here again. This gets discarded. I'm not allowed to choose it anymore. And then I still get to draw the card, but we already know the drill. So we will go for the experimental defenses. It will go on top of the deck. We will replenish the offering here. That's take one damage, move four, persistence. Take one damage, move six. Hmm. I don't know if that's really that cool. And that's pretty much the end of the turn. It was a very lengthy turn, actually. And yet again, we have taken another damage card. So I'm only drawing three more cards. And there's at least one more damage in it, I believe. Move two, yeah, agility. That's also one of the new ones. Yeah, and apparently we haven't drawn the diplomacy. Of course, I mean, it had to be, right? You must be really kidding me, guys. Um, I think there are at least two diplomacy cards in my deck. I chose not to go with the diplomacy and that's how I get punished. Yeah, but <laughs> that's what it is. Over to Lorsor and Pitor. One, two, and three. Yes, kind of lucky still. So not too fast. And then we have to find a way how to deal with these um, remaining defenders here. Huh, that's a tricky one. Apparently, let's start with our skill here. So we get to discard one damage card. And let's really hope we are not... And of course, we didn't get another... Ah, diplomacy card into our hand. Again, the last two cards will then be diplomacy. But okay, maybe I can use diplomacy in order to heal my folks. So in theory, I might have a chance now to take out these guys. And maybe that's what I should do. Yeah, let's do that. So I will not move. I will send another away team mode still here. So again, this away team will now beam onto the Borg cube. And I guess we have to send in Riker. Yep. So he will, uh, where's the beam token again? I keep putting these away. And of course I have to play my seasoned awaiting now. I'm kind of powered because I don't have the right crystals. So um, I get a plus two on diplomacy for all the crew members. It's only Riker, keep that in mind. Um, so I will spend him for diplomacy six now. I need 10 in order to defeat those guys. So I have to play these four cards sideways now. That's really so wasteful, but I want to get rid of those guys. Absolutely. So that's a diplomacy of 10, which is now enough to take out those guys here too. So that's six more thing. I basically get to place the final one here. So this ball cube is now destroyed. How cool is that? We have to move on to the Borg cube, but in this case, I'm all alone, so it doesn't really matter. So I can leave my Defiant here. So I'm now salvaging this Borg cube. So in theory, I can now um, interact with this Borg cube um, if I end my movement there. So I can pretty much hire crew members with the Borg cube icon, which isn't really bad. And I also get my hand size increased by two. Ooh, that's really one addition of the Borg cube. And if you have basically both benefits are coming from Romulan Starbase, you only get the, the higher bonus. But in this case, my hand size is increased, but because I have yeah, clearly the most amount of faction tokens on it. So that was definitely a great success. So the first Borg cube is out, but it was really crazy expensive in respect to cards. So that's a six. So we're moving to 70 experience points. So yeah, this book, or at least class K planet, I believe, is also destroyed. Very, very nice. We are not re-rolling any dice. So this way team token comes back to us. We are drawing now up to eight cards, yeah, because plus two of the ball cube. 
Yep, that's what it is. Um, okay, one, two, three, four, of course, five, six, I think that's seven, yeah, one more. And okay, here we now do have the diplomacy. And again, we could use the diplomacy now to um, either heal Mova. Problem is I need to heal him twice. So we need to come up with six heal points here because he is a level three character in order to get rid of one of those tokens. So really this biogenic weapon is definitely a problem. I'm not really, I'm re running very low on cards now. So I'm not really sure what I should doing next but we will work that one out once Loser and Bitor had their go two and three yes of course this time they will also speed up four more cards one two three and four yeah it had to come out at some point in time so again we have to make a choice now what to do um our crew members are all either activated or heavily wounded that is, um, in theory, I could definitely still try to take out that Romulan Warbird here. That's another two points. I mean, that's easy prey. And I could, in theory, I don't know. Here I get, uh, that's only a repair point, but I can get rid of a card there. I mean, that's also not a bad thing. And before I forget, let's definitely not forget our token here. So we will get rid of one of those damage cards to redraw a hand. And that's the, ah, the advanced research. That's cool. So I can use the stronger effect too. So yeah, we do have an incentive now, maybe going for some actual diplomacy here. Uh, what we only have the one diplomacy card in our hand, right? No, 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 here's the other one. So we, again, we could come up with nine diplomacy. So we could also get another crew member because there is still a token, command token waiting here. And the crew offering isn't bad at all. We even have one that we could get from the Borg cube here with a nine, uh, with an eight. Huh. And wow, at five, um, add plus two to one number on another card you own for the rest of the turn. Wow, plus, simply a plus three, whatever it is. Could be, for example, with the honor, that's a plus nine then. A plus three and it's 12 damage we could do with it. So Lancer, yeah. That's not bad, but in this case, I could also say maybe we simply should go for something easy and go for the really core medical officer because we could ready a level one and level two crew member. So that's war, for example. We can heal two, I meaning heal two is also not bad. That's also six diplomacy points worth of a heal two, um, which is still not enough to heal Movar in the slightest, actually. So maybe that's also not really so great. On the other hand, on a class M planet, we could also go for one of those um, advanced command cards here. I mean, a long range three attack, isolytic burst is really great during the attack phase of combat destroy target enemy token. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's our best bet. And I think we can get it for six, for 60 diplomacy, but we need to move next to a class M planet. So we need to come up with a four move, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. And now I noticed um, that this is still confusing because in theory, I'm not really on that space. I'm really on that space here. So I cannot camp here. I have to really move to an adjacent space. So for example, I could move in here and then it would provoke this enemy, but still I would need to spend three movement points, but then I need two more. So I think in this case, I might not go after it. Maybe not, maybe not, no. Let's not do this. So we will basically move four spaces here. That's our goal. So we need to come up with four movement points. And maybe I really should have gone for some more movement cards, but that's okay. So here we have a move two, three, and four. So yes, we are spending Cisco for a yeah, basically boring move. So that's four movement points. We are adjacent to that class M planet. Then again, we want to interact with that class M planet which means we will play this card here. We have to power it with blue data. It's also not a problem. We will play 
both of those cards here. So this gives us a Diplomacy 9. We get the stronger effect of two actions for free. And I believe we want to have... No, oh, okay. I think I see the problem now. I cannot come up with enough heal but i could get for a, okay i can i can go for the repair point that's still fine so we have a diplomacy of nine i will spend i cannot heal mova then all right we need three heal points and one heal point will cost us two diplomacy here so we need three heal points to wow remove one damage token. so mova unfortunately we will not be able to heal you in time at least not this round so let's let's stick to the plan i guess we will spend two of those um diplomacy points to repair one damage card i think that's already a good start we have still seven left and with six we will go with the isolytic burst i mean this is awfully tempting don't you think yeah let's go for it we put it on top of our command deck and then we have one more diplomacy point left so in theory yes i could spend this card sideways i don't have any more damage cards on my hand so i think i will not do that so that's already the end of our turn so let's do some cleanup so let's roll that die that's a yellow one I'm not really sure if i can use it or not and then, yeah, let's draw our hand of cards. I believe these might be all of our cards. We are drawing up to six. Yeah, that's all of our cards. So we still have repair, but we don't have... Ah, the call to arms is back. You may use one ability. Ah, can this help us? No. Oh, that's so, 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 so unfortunate. Because again, that's only a heal two and we need a heal three in order to be successful. But on the other hand, I could come up with two more points. So in theory, I could get rid of one of those wound tokens. Maybe that's something to consider. So let's draw the cards for Lorsor and Betor. Yes, okay. So that's basically their, yeah an ultimate turn this round so with the next action they will declare the end of the round so i get two more turns but i think i might not need two of those and so in theory i could engage this ball cube here but they are all <laughs> all by tokens and here we have the disruptor and that means enemy loses disruptors that's really something that we want to get rid of um and wow really take an awful lot of damage i have really no clue how to deal with that ball cube up there this seems to be very very challenging yes i do have a lot of cards but mm, really not a lot which i might hmm, be able to use or need this round okay let's see about that okay i was working through my options quite heavily but i don't I originally I was really tempted to go after the ball cube here and I think I might have been able to take out at least two of those fellas down there the problem is I don't have enough defense because I would really suffer a catastrophic damage maybe towards the end of the round that's not so bad but here that's I think three cards I'm taking three cards three cards this I would be able to block in theory but that's really a hell of a lot of damage cards I would be drawing that's really catastrophic damage and this happens before and before when I draw these cards I am no longer doing my attack phase apparently so unfortunately I'm not able to go after this Borg cube just yet but I also basically learned it's not impossible but I have to prepare myself much better to do so. So I think in this case we have to do another very boring turn so maybe I want to stay next to this class M planet so not moving on the other hand I could also try to move maybe somewhere else where I get to do both. The thing is on the outpost here is not really that it's not really great and again the dry dog here i cannot heal my characters this is what i want to do i really want to at least start healing moba as i really really need him so yeah yeah let's let's simply stay here and ideally we come up with i believe 12 diplomacy here <laughs> in order to fully heal moba but i don't think that's that's 
something. No, that's very unrealistic. I could still debate, though, if I want to leverage um, the medical officer or if I want to hire the medical officer again, because I can already a crew member, a level one or level two crew member, which is definitely not a bad thing and gives me some repair or heal points and also give me some um, data tokens. But I, st I could in theory do both if I'm not mistaken. I think if I play my hand clever, I might be able to do both. So let's see about that. So first of all, we will play the call to arms. We have to power it here with a red die. So we can now um, use an ability of one crew member in the crew officer's turn as if we're one of your recruits. So I will go with a medical officer to ready a level one or level two crew member. And I guess I will ready Riker because he gives me a diplomacy of four could be beneficial so yes um and keep in mind that's a special thing um so i can basically do that anytime during the turn I believe outside of attack or so i don't know um and now i can use the diplomacy four here in order to recruit for example and we still have the medical officer with me but i just noticed she needs a blue data in order to provide her heal too. So I'm not sure if that's now really the best thing in the world or if I should simply use his diplomacy for and power it up a little bit to come up at least with some um, heal points for Movar instead. Maybe, maybe that's a thing, right? I could also go for another special action card. Um, especially command cards, so I could still buy, I don't know, power it up with two and go for repair and transit, for example. Or here, another diplomacy two, um, which could also help us. And we may use diplomacy as shields this turn. So this gives us also a hell of a lot. I think that's really cool. Maybe that's, that's what I should be doing. Okay, I will power up this one here. So I will use Riker and will spend, I think, two cards now sideways in order to come up with diplomacy six so i will go with a diplomat diplomatic skill very nice then i will play the repair hull so which gives me a repair or a card, draw a card i will draw a card and yet again that's a diplomacy of two. Unfortunately, I don't have any red die with me. So again, I have diplomacy of two, but I think with diplomacy two, I cannot do anything right now. At least that's how I understand it. We have two more cards in our hand. And so we could come up to a diplomacy four, but the diplomacy four is not enough to heal him. We need three heal points in order to, yeah get rid of one of those wound tokens here which means that's six diplomacy so i think there's really nothing we can do here huh no it's not okay so i think i will call it the end so in theory i still have to move maybe i want to use the move with my next action so i'm really out of cards here but let me take one mulligan so i will not have played this card here sideways i think i will have played i don't know maybe this card no no this card here sideways yeah so i will still have this card in my hand yeah so apologies for that let's re-roll that data die here that's a blue one oh <laughs> amazing lost and before they will only call for the end of the round so i get one more turn and that was really really fortunate so uh, i think i could still move should i move with a move two or not i could actually because it would be bring me close to the ball cube. So if I want to attack it with my very first action, I don't have to spend any move cards. Yeah, I think let's do that. So we will spend a move two to move adjacent to that ball cube here. Then we will play this card, the synthesized data. Again, of course, we want to power it up with a blue data here. Gain one red, blue or gold crystal in your inventory so i will go with the red because i have a lot of cool abilities where i need red data so i think that was 
still a meaningful final turn or so um, but that's really the end of the round so again i will do all the stuff here off camera here we already know those from between they get a red data crystal in the inventory this card is gone this blue card goes into the deck of cards but i think that's not too bad let's simply re-roll those dice we need two basic colors yeah here we have two basic colors maybe we can do something about that black data here too with some of our undiscovered cards apparently we will discard the crew offer here and the advanced action we will bring it back because there are still three cars and planets out and with that being said I really hope you are still enjoying my little playthrough of Star Trek Frontiers. Uh, again, I really hope I haven't messed things up too badly, especially when attacking that Borg here, but I think I should have been fine. Again, if there was a major goof, it's very unlikely that I can take it back, so I have to find a way on how to penalize myself then. But yeah, let's see about that again. Appreciate all your comments, all your support really helps me a lot guys huge shout out to my patrons out there um yeah you're great you're stars if you want to support my channel then please check out my page on patreon um, like and subscribe and yeah apart from that hope you're all safe hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye